number 17. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with a solution containing a common ion. And then show that it is not appropriate to neglect the changes in the initial concentration of the common ions. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> this not appropriate thing. Mm. Okay. This is going to be a wild ride, guys, so I'll try to do it as quickly as I can. A lot of it is already, uh, we've already learned a lot of it, basically, from all the, the, the questions that we have been doing, but let's go. So I had to look up uh, in the back of a textbook what the KSP is for the compound that is being dissolved. It's always the solid. So we have TLCl. That has a solubility product, a KSP, of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we first have to write out the balanced equation that just breaks this down. That's the whole part of this whole chapter. So we have TL, CL, that's a solid. We're dealing with K values, so we're talking about equilibrium, double arrows, between the two compounds, or not the two compounds, the two ions, right? So that has to be between the TL and the CL. So TL plus CL. Let's get those charges. Seems like there's one chlorine for every one TL. So TL would be a plus one. And maybe I will uh, just do it in a different color. Plus one. And maybe I'll just say plus. And then CL would be minus. They are charged, so they're aqueous. And I'm already looking at this compound, and I notice that it's already balanced. So we're good to go. So I'm just going to put this up top here. Oh, that fits nice. Now... I'm going to use this equation to just write the KSP. Now, I wrote down the balanced equation, not the balanced equation, the uh, general formula for the KSP, right? It's just equal to the products because no solids are allowed. So the KSP would be concentration of the TL plus times the CL minus. And they're both raised to their coefficients, but each one of them, I notice that I only have one of them, right? It's a one-to-one, -one, so I don't have to raise anything because anything raised to the first is itself. So now let's write down what I know. KSP is 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth, but I don't know what these concentrations are. That's when I'm going to start using X values, but I do see that I have another compound. Remember, because of our solubility rules, any nitrate ion is always aqueous, no exceptions. So this compound will break down into its ions. So I have to write that equation. So we have Tl, NO3, this is aqueous. So that will break down 100% of the time into its two ions. And the break is between the Tl and the NO3. Nitrate polyatomic never breaks up, right? So I have TL, TL, and NO3. From what we said before, the TL was a plus charge, plus one, and nitrates are always minus ones. And everything looks like it's a one-to-one, -one, so we're good with that. They told us that we had 0 0.025 molarity of the TL NO3, so the thing here is that you want to only worry about the ion that is the same in both equations. Which ion is the same in both equations? It's the CL. Just kidding. Did I get you? <laughs> it's the TL, right? Um, that's called the common ion effect. Common ion, the same ion in both equations. So just pay attention to these ratios, but it seems like it's a one-to-one-to-one. So I don't even care what's going on with the nitrate. Since I have one to one, whatever the molarity is here, that's what the molarity is going to be for the TL. And now I have a starting molarity for my solubility. This is initial. So as soon as I have an initial concentration, because that's what this compound was in, this solution, I have to write a ICE uh, table, right? An ice table. So let's do that. No solids. We don't care about that. So get rid of that. 
and the TL we just said initially was 0.025. I didn't start off with any chlorine, so that's zero. C is the change. You could only go up from zero, so plus X, and then this would be also plus X. Keep in mind that you have to use the ratio, but they're both one X. And then pull the numbers together, 0 0.025 plus X, and zero plus X is X. These are your numbers that you're going to be using in your KSP equation. So I have a TL of 0 0.025 plus X, and then the CL is the X. Now here comes the, uh, you know, the problem here, guys. It's already setting us up that it's not acceptable to neglect the changes, meaning that we have to keep this plus X um, in this problem, right? Uh, last question, we were assuming that this change was so small that it didn't budge the number. Now, if we actually just quickly plugged in your values for, you know, KSP and plugged in the 0 0.025 in for X and for X and solve it. Maybe I'll just show that for you guys. 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth equals 0 0.025 times X. Solve for X. So we get, I'm just doing this quickly because I know that we can't do it but it says show, so this is the showing. If we solve for x this way, we get 0 0.0068. Now here it comes, we have to pass the 5% rule. That means that if we take the answer and divide it by the initial concentration, which was 0 0.025, and we times it by 100 to get the percentage, if this number is five or less, we were assumed correctly and we can go about our merry way. But if we get higher than 5%, um, we have to do it again <laughs> with that plus X. So this divided by 0 0.025, oh boy, 27.2%, yeah. So that means, sorry, gotta go back, gotta go back. So I'm just gonna say this was a big X. That's why we, you know, can't neglect it. So I'm getting rid of this getting rid of this, and I'm coming back up here, and I'm saying that I have to keep the plus X. So now, here's the real thing. 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth equals 0 0.025 plus X times X. Distribute. So 1.7 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth equals 0 0.025 X plus X times X is X squared. And here's the debacle here. We have a X and then we have an X squared. That's the quadratic equation. Remember, we got to get all of the numbers onto one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth on both sides. And now I'm just going to rearrange my equation. So I have, this is going to equal zero. I'm gonna write the X squared first. So X squared plus 0.025X minus 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. And let's just get rid of this middle guy. So maybe I'll say pause the video if you need to write that down. But the quadratic's coming up, so I'm just going to erase it. And I'm going to put, oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to put this up here with our A, Bs, and Cs, right? Remember, the A value is in front of the X squared. There was a 1 here, so A equals 1. The B value is the number that's in front of the X. So B equals 0 0.025. And then the C value is just the number all by itself, but you have to take into consideration that charge. So C equals negative 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. Keep in mind you had to take into consideration that this was a positive, so maybe I will just go over that. Okay, beautiful. And now here comes the quadratic, boom. 
x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, I don't know where we're going to put this. I guess we'll put that over there. So here we go. x equals negative b. So negative 0 0.025 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's 0 0.025. Let's just pull that together. Minus, minus 4 times a, which was 1, times c, which is negative 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this is all over 2 times a, which is 1. So we got to find that x value. Well, let's just simplify. 2 times 1 is just 2, so get rid of that. We can plug this whole thing in into the calculator at once and solve. That's what I'll do. So I get, uh, let's see, or I'll do it in pieces, but we should get the same answer. 4 times 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. Got that. 0 0.025 squared. And then that's plus that answer because a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm going to erase all of this. Whee! And I get 0 0.00130. We have to take the square root of that. So let's just do that. A lot of numbers. Um, but try not to round. 0 0.036124. I don't know. 8. That's good enough. Whoop. And then this is remember all over 2. Now remember, since we started off with nothing, we can only go up, meaning that the x value has to be a positive value. We have two decisions here. One is going to be negative 0.025 plus this number, and the other one is negative minus this number. Do you know which one will give us the positive answer? You're absolutely correct, it's the plus. So I don't even care about this negative. Only choose the plus. So now I'm going to do the top. Negative 0 0.025 plus 0 0.036.1248. And let's just erase that. It becomes a positive. Thank goodness. 0 0.011.1248. Divide that by 2. And now we get an x value. So let's just pull this over. Whoop, whoop. x equals, I guess, uh, two sig figs, 5.6 times 10 to the negative third. And that's molarity. Now all you got to do is just go back and plug in into your x values. Keep in mind that your TL concentration was 0 0.025 plus x. So I'm just going to plus this value to the x value. So 0 0.025 plus 5.6 times 10 to the negative third. I get 0 0.0306. I don't care about sig figs. I guess it would be 0 0.031 if we were keeping with the three sig figs or the two sig figs. And then the CL is just the X value. So that's 5.6 times 10 to the negative third. And we are finally done. Those are your concentrations of the solutes without assuming. Okay. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you with many, many more questions. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. 
and check the channel out. We also got physics and math videos at the moment. Maybe we can help you out with that too and much more to come in the future. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.